Loss comes in many forms, and usually in unexpected ways. It can be devastating, leaving you facing an uphill struggle to go on with life without someone you thought would always be there. But life does go on, and even in the deepest despair, we can find hope. Welcome to Grief Relief with your hosts, Drs. Gloria and Heidi Horsley, brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation, helping people find hope after loss. And now here's Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi. Welcome to Grief Relief. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my co-host, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi, we've got a really important show today because I love art and music, and I think they are so, um, so, and humor. And we're going to have mm -hmm. all three of those on the show today because it's so important to bring these concepts into grief and loss. And we'll be talking about to our guests about it and talking to them about how they've done and how they've brought these into their lives. Like you said, Mom, using creativity to heal is so important because sometimes we can talk, but we need to do other things to find hope and to heal. And it also kind of it brings in the larger community with grief and loss. Mm -hmm. Well, we're gonna have a, a good friend of ours, uh, Carol Shabelli, uh, is going to be on the show, and she is going to talk about how she uses humor, and she uh, lost her husband, and we met her at Michelle Neff's Soaring Spirits Foundation, and I hope people will go on the internet and look up Michelle, because she does some great work with grief and loss, and then we're going to have a friend of yours on, Heidi. Yeah, after we talked with Carol, and like you said, she's a comedian as well, who wrote a book, Poor Widow Me, we are going to speak with my sweet mate, she shares an office with me, her name is Basha Mozinski, and she is a licensed art therapist, and she's going to talk about how she helps her clients and also helped herself heal through art after loss. And then we're going to have Larry Stevens on, a great singer, and he's going to sing his song um, about healing through music, and the name of the song is Love Just Happens. So it's going to be a great show. Well, Heidi, let's start out by talking to our first guest today. Okay, very good. I was four months from me, I was in a bereavement group, and that's when I first had my moment of realizing I'm still who I am. I didn't, I'm social, but I didn't want to be there. So we had uh, a circle, you know how those are. You're sitting in a circle. I had my head down so I wouldn't have to have eye contact with anyone. And I noticed that everybody was wearing ugly shoes. <laughs> and I said, wow, isn't that interesting that I was able to notice that? That's like the old bitchy me. Oh. <laughs> I'm back. Hey, Carol. Welcome Hi, to the Carol. show. Hi, Carol. The Horsleys are here. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm here with the Horsleys. Hello, hello. It's, it's so great to have you on the show today, Thank Carol. You. And I've just been so impressed by your spirit and your energy and you. You know, all the things that, that you bring to the world. And talk a little bit about your book that you wrote and show our my audience book. that. Oh, look at this. It happens to be on my lap. Look at that. <laughs> what a coincidence. It's called Poor Widow Me. I have to actually read the subtitle. I forgot. I wrote it two years ago. Moments of feeling and dealing and finding the funny along the way. And that really mm -hmm. is basically it. Not to be poor widow me, of course. To be um, upbeat and to realize that, to be grateful for what, what we had as a couple, for me personally. I was married 33 years. Mm -hmm. He was my high school sweetheart, Jimmy. And he was sick for maybe a month, had wow. cancer, and so for me, it was a shock. It was sudden to me. Uh, I must have gone for the first six months saying, how could this happen? How could this happen? Mm -hmm. And because um, it wasn't the happy ending that I expected, but who does? Really? Right. Who, you know, really. Mm -hmm. So I wrote the book, and um, it was very helpful. It was so, very so helpful. You were, he was only sick for one month? Just about a month. He had a very aggressive cancer. Wow. And, was, and how old was he when he died? He was 56. So wow. you were a young widow, yeah, and then eventually you found humor. But how long after he died were you? Did you find humor? I know, I know you're a comedian, but yeah, well, you know, people ask that, and they say I could never do that. But a friend of mine who also had lost her husband about five or six years before that, she said, "Write a blog. Mm -hmm. You'll never remember the, what you're feeling." And funny things happen. People mm -hmm. say ridiculous things. They to do, you. don't they? Yeah, they really do. And th funny things come to mind when you're kind of a humorous per when you're a funny person you're kind of wired to be funny mm -hmm. and it's my mind naturally goes that way mm -hmm. and we were right. funny together 
Right. Um, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that because we've got a picture oh. we're going to show right now of you at the ballpark mm -hmm. with your hubby. Yes. And in your hand, you have what, a little rubber ducky or He's something? He's a teeny little rubber duck. We used to call oh. him the duck. Yeah, you really, that's a really good picture of Jimmy because we were at Yankee Stadium. We had great seats, and yeah. my husband had this little <laughs> duck that he, uh, it's for luck because mm -hmm. he was a Yankee fan, and he would hold the duck up to the crowd. <laughs> To show the crowd the duck, not to show the crowd the duck, to show the duck the crowd, which is like kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> but he did, and and people really kept expecting him to bring it out at a critical part of the game. Mm. That's just the kind of person he was, very kind of bigger than life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, talk about some of the problems with widows. Let's maybe start out. First of all, did you like the name widow? I mean, how is that for you? That's interesting that you say that. I had no problem with that. Every widow I've ever spoken to say, oh, I hate that word. Mm -hmm. Single was strange to me. Single. Oh, okay. <clears throat> we got married. I was 22. We were going out since I was eight. We were 18. So I was never single. I right. never had that time. So for me, I remember there was something I wanted to do, and a friend of mine said, well, you could do that. You're single. And I went, oh, my God, I'm single. That's right. That is interesting because yeah. widow implies that you had a spouse that right. died. Yes. But single implies that you're by yourself. You're alone well, and I single. Well, I knew I had a spouse that died. Yeah. Because <laughs> that wasn't news to me. Yeah. I know what you're saying, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Talk a little bit about when do I take off my ring? When do I take off my ring? Which that's I've a, noticed that's, it's, it's off. off. It's off, yes. Mm -hmm. It's been off since about a year and a half. Mm. For me, I had a situation with a little six year old who I knew, who knew Jimmy, and she said to me, I had my ring on, she said, is that a wedding band? And I said, yes. She said, well, why are you wearing it? You're not married anymore. Kind uh, of snippy, but. That's their children. They're just yes. kind of honest. Yes, yeah. and I, I said, you know what? It's, it just happened to be time. I wanted to start dating. Mm -hmm. That was a big part. And I knew mm -hmm. if I took it off, I would never put it on again. So it was sort of a. Now, okay, now how long was this? I just heard. Mm -hmm. I want to start dating. I wanted to start dating. Yes. Whoa, how so long? Then, well, I started dating about two years later, not two years after the ring, about six months after that. Uh, about two years after your husband? husband died, yes. Okay. And I was, actually, I have to say, I enjoyed it. I had never done that. I, I had a bereavement shrink at the time who I called Mean Jean, and she said, well, you <laughs> really, because she was kind of like, snap out of it. And I go, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> reality therapy yeah. mean, with Mean Jean. Like, yes, exactly, <laughs> right? And she said, um, she said to me that when you start dating again, you'll be 18 again because that's when you start. And I said, oh my God, 58 years old and an 18 with a head of an 18 year old, that won't be so good. So it's an adjustment. And I had a relationship for about a year. What about uh, pictures of him around the house if you have somebody you're dating? I mean... Oh, that was interesting, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, so I did have... Uh, well, when we kind of went up the stairs to go <laughs> to the bedroom, uh, there was a big picture of uh, my husband and myself right there. And at one point, I... And he was so great about it. But I, I, t I did take that down. But other pictures I kept up. I do have children. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's their father, and that was my husband for all those years, and right. part of part of the, the house. Well, no. well, I always say one of the ways we heal, and and I've worked with a lot of widows that say this, is to continue bonds with those that have died while reinvesting in new relationships. But you still, to a certain extent, hold them in your heart. Of course. As you're reinvesting in oh, new relationships. Oh, of course. Uh, although now I recently saw somebody that I hadn't seen in about three years, the man that I was seeing, mm -hmm. and when we were dating, at the three year mark. In the house, my husband was always there. Mm. He was there. He was around us all the time. I had one foot in, one foot okay. out. I remember he came. Um, he came over, and I had just watched a video with my husband, mm. and it was basically, like, "Who are you?" Mm -hmm. You know, he, I, he brought me right back to my so-called old life. Um, but he, I recently saw him, and he came to the house, and it wasn't like that. It was the same house, same house I, I've lived in for 25 years, brought up my family. Mm -hmm. It was. It was time, I think. Time yeah, really just like with it. nothing else. I think time really makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. did for me. Now, what about uh, their possessions? What did you do about clothes? And oh. how long did you decide? And, you know, I know that's a big issue for people. About a week and a half. Everything. <laughs> Get out. No. no. Uh, <laughs> some people do do that. Yeah, um, true. Yeah. Well, it was about two years, I think. Mm. And people say, oh, you're so sentimental. I said, nah, I don't really need the closet space. <laughs> mm. <laughs> right. Okay. But somebody told me about a memory quilt. 
Mm -hmm. And that those. really helped me because you put, you know, about the memory quilt. The, I worked with 9/11 widows for 10 ah. years, and they used, they had all these memory quilts that right. were made for them. But Big talk, talk to us about what you, it is. Cause they're they're wonderful. It's wonderful, wonderful for anyone to do that. You t you, t you take all the clothes and you get you pick out the, the things that you want to save. They're on four inch uh, squares, and you make make a quilt. And so you always have his clothes. Even one of the little pockets had little cookie crumbs. It was kind of sad. Wow. Yes, yeah. Well, Carol, thank you so much for talking about this right now. We want to have Basha come in and talk a little bit about art. Okay. And then we want to interview you and Basha together Sounds and talk good. about, you know, how you do your art. And how, I mean, how you do your um, writing, too. You're a comic writer. You're not just a comedian. Right, so. right. All right. So, Heidi, uh, we're going to have your friend Basha come in now. Very right? good. All right. Basha. My name Basha. Hey, Hi. Basha. Oh, good to see you. Good to see you too. Good to see you. Great nice to have to you on the show, Basha. Oh, and great nice to meet you. you. I, I hadn't met you before. before. So nice to meet you. Oh, that's yeah. Basha was on our radio show, but I forgot. Yeah. Even if no, we had never person seen person. each other physically. We were just yeah, on our show pleasure. that people can hear if they go to uh, opentohope.com. Mm -hmm. They'll yeah. be able to listen to the radio show with you, which was great. Well, Basha, talk to us about your losses. I know you've had a couple. You mm -hmm. had a stepson that was killed in a train accident. Mm -hmm. years ago and then yeah. recently your mom right correct yeah my stepson died this is it's been since 1993 so it's mm -hmm. a it's a very long time but I have to tell you that I just had a dream about him last night oh, Wow! and I think what you know knowing that I was coming on yeah. today and uh, and it you know it settles into a into a particular place in your heart after mm -hmm. many many years but in the, the it was a compensatory dream so what I did in the dream was I saved him Wow. What does compensatory mean? Means that it compensates for the reality that actually happened. Okay. Wow. I, I I'm glad you asked that because I wasn't sure. What <laughs> yeah. I couldn't save him in mm -hmm. real life, and the dream actually showed that in the dream I talked to him and I saved him in ah. the dream. Gotcha. So it, uh, you know, it's it's still with me after all these years, but. Uh, in a different way. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm just thinking, I know you, I've just seen a picture that you did of him, and I'm thinking I saved him, and you have saved him. Mm. You've saved him on the, in your art, you've mm. saved him in your heart. You're yeah. talking about him on the show today. I mean, we mm. do yeah. save people yeah. in other ways, don't we? Then and I am happy so for the, the opportunity, you know, to actually to talk about him, because it, it has settled in a particular way in life where he's not uh, part of conversations uh, regularly but mm -hmm. um, you know I do I do talk about him sometimes when a client comes in and, and they're struggling with a mm -hmm. particular loss I'll you know uh, share some of my some of my story just mm -hmm. so that they know that they're not alone mm -hmm. in how devastating a loss can be oh, that's and how it can wipe you so important not alone right Heidi? I agree yeah. but yes it's absolutely yeah. important to know that others have made it and you will too and yeah. that you're not alone. Absolutely. Now, I know Logan died in a train accident, but what happened? He, w uh, it's, a, it's a very long okay. story, but uh, what did happen was it was a head-on collision okay. uh, on a shared uh, part of track. Mm -hmm. uh, and around this loss, there was so much synchronicity uh, that came out. Like, for example, he asked before he was on the train, do trains run on the same track? Wow. That's and bizarre. it happened on this shared... Wow, and he Piece was only of track ten. And he was ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was ten and a half. And I love that photo, which I know we're going yeah, to get Yeah, show us the photo. Well, and what I want to show that. you is um, part of part of the grieving process for me uh, required making art. Mm -hmm. So I call this Logan meditation. Mm -hmm. And what it is is I'm just going to hold this. It's very rudimentary, I love it. but uh, I had made um, uh, Xeroxes, just black and white Xeroxes of a really great photo of him. Mm -hmm. And then I hand colored 30 of them. Wow. And I just sat with them one after the other, after the other, mm -hmm. after the other, and just kept like being with him, his mm -hmm. eyes, his lips, his nose, just uh. crying. They were watercolor pencils, so <laughs> the tears were in there. And, uh, but it was very meditative and it helped me. Mm -hmm. uh, so then I ended up having like 30 of them and I put them all on the wall in my wow. studio. And, uh, you know, he was with me that way for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, but the process of uh, when you're ready, you know, when you're ready to be able to look at a photograph, mm -hmm. when you're ready to be able to listen to an audio tape or an answering machine with their mm -hmm. voice, you know, it all comes in stages. It's not, it's not right away. Or, or see you know? a video. 
or to watch a I, video. I was on yeah. a 2020 segment and I'm talking about Eric Clapton losing his four-year-old son Connor. Yeah. It took Eric Clapton and his girlfriend 15 years to yeah. want to watch live video of their four-year-old when he was living. Yeah. And it's like yeah. I told the person that was interviewing me, that's normal. Because it's really painful it's, to sometimes watch live video yeah. Yeah. and go into those places and remember the people that we loved. Well, and I think died. part of what happened for me and maybe why I got into the art so quickly was mm -hmm. I was in graduate school for an MFA mm -hmm. when he died. Wow. I was in the first, at the end of the first semester. So my artwork So changed. master's in fine arts. You were in, in that program art. already. Correct. I was in okay. the first, so I had uh, three semesters to go. Mm -hmm. Two, you know, a year and a half, and um, so all my artwork completely changed, and it focused on him. Mm -hmm. it, uh, uh, to the chagrin of uh, uh, of my my advisors, you know, they were like, uh, "You you better get off of this." You know that you is know? so true. How do you, they try to talk her out of doing her my uh, dissertation. dissertation on sibling loss? Yep. You know, can't do that. Don't you do know, it. That, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why we're here on mm -hmm. public access today uh, yeah. with grief relief because this is the place where we can actually bring people on to talk about uh, grief and loss because people yeah. don't want to talk about it. They're willing to right. talk about the good death or, you know, what you do to meditate or whatever, but they mm -hmm. don't want to talk about, okay, we've lost somebody, now what? And you guys are willing yeah. to come and do this, but which is an amazing thing in and it of is. itself. And, and the topic Thank scares you. people, as you all know. Everybody thinks, oh, my goodness, if it happened to them, could it happen to us? You know, it's a, yeah. it, people don't even yeah. want to think about that. I'm just wondering for people out there that right now have had a loss and don't know how they're going to survive, is there something they could do artistically? Because I love how you kind of live through... His photo. I guess they could do that. Well, that that's one way. The the, the other way. I'm going to just segue into the loss of my mother, which mm. is just a few months now. Wow. Uh, but she was she was aging. So mm -hmm. what I'm talking about is anticipatory grief. Yeah. And when you have the, I guess the fortune of that, not what we've experienced right. certainly uh, in the past, but anticipatory grief allows you to. Uh, you know, to begin maybe audio recording or mm -hmm. maybe yeah. take some photographs and, and then later start processing some of that. And there's a great website that I'm using uh, actively called planetmemorial.com. Planet Memorial. And, and you can upload your images, you can mm -hmm. upload documents. I have a great photograph of my mother when she came to the United States in 1951 and it's her her immigration papers with a photograph uh -huh. of her like just she just came out of the war she was in a refugee camp she traveled across with my father you know and then there here she is you know and this is the new beginning you know mm -hmm. now let me say uh, anticipatory grief we are you know kind of understand what that is but for those who don't know what it is it's the fact that you know they're going to die and you have mm -hmm. long periods of time to think mm -hmm. about it and talk about it and that kind of thing as opposed to mm -hmm. sudden loss. Well, let's talk to you both now for a minute about um, about your uh, comedy and art. Well, Carol, when you hear Basha talk, I was wondering, it, does anything come up for you as a writer and comedian and uh, that kind of thing? Absolutely. I mean, if I didn't have what I started as a blog to write, I think it would have been much harder for me. I, mm -hmm. As we all know, that when somebody passes away, I mean, that's another thing. I couldn't say died for quite a while. Mm -hmm. But when someone dies, they, um, I had so many different feelings. And when I had to write it, and I write about something and sounds somewhat coherent, it mm -hmm. made me kind of filter out all the other noise and zero in on something. So that was very helpful. Did, very they, helpful. did you have people mm -hmm. blog back to you? Yeah, I had a lot of comments. I had a lot of comments because it was poor widow me. Uh, mm. and, it, and so it attracted some, a lot of widows. And, and I started getting letters from people, and mm. people bond together with mm -hmm. the loss, as you all know. It's and a community. It's a community. Oh, I mean, if you exactly. can grieve in community, you're, sure. you know, a lot better off to move along. I think the Internet's absolutely amazing. So I know Definitely. you have your poor uh, widow me site, and you have what's your site? I have a, a YouTube channel, uh, Art Psych is my uh, YouTube channel, and my website, which is uh, artpsych.info. And, you know, uh, it, the blog is in it. It's so important. You can so reach important. so many people. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. People can actually find community. It's, it's amazing. And the apps that are available on cell phones and on iPads and so forth where you can make a little scrapbook. Right. You can upload it to, you know, a base like uh, Planet Memorial. 
you can do interviews, you can, you know, you can do so much. It's, it's a great time to die. But it is. Twenty years ago, we didn't have any. Right. That, right? You can. Yeah. You, you. You've got yeah. your handheld, and you can get immediate feedback, and you can get immediate support. Support from all exactly. these internet sites. And you can share. Like yes. I can. You know, later on, I can show you a picture of my mom. I can show you a video yeah. right. of her from. I had some slides digitized. One hundred and ninety mm -hmm. slides I wow. took to have digitized. So now I. Have them electronically. We don't want do to anything. see. We don't want to see all those pictures of your mother. <laughs> we no, don't have that kind of time. Always, do we? She's <laughs> always with me. Right. Oh, good. But you. But I'm not really interested. But that's you know. Now okay. you know it's really interesting. You you had two different types of loss. You you yeah. had your stepson. You've had your mother. You've had your spouse. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I, I always find interesting is. And Heidi knows us. The worst loss you have is the one that's knocked you on the ground mm -hmm. and set you off right now. Because I've had widows say to me, the Oof. worst thing in the world is to lose your husband. And I've had people say to me, the worst thing in the world is to lose your child. Mm -hmm. And the worst mm -hmm. thing in the world to lose your mother. Our number one mm -hmm. search on opentohope.com is parent loss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, okay. I think, uh, Heidi, you've talked about it before, that sometimes people tend to uh, compare their losses. Absolutely. Uh. When we all know the worst thing in the world is to lose your sibling. <laughs> exactly, I forgot right. that when I'm in so, trouble. So comp but you, the yes. compensation is crazy in this room. It is, isn't it? It's right. like whose loss is worse, and like you said, they're all bad. They're all hard when they happen because we don't know how we're going to survive, right? right. And right. we don't know right. how we're going to get through it. We don't. Right. We certainly don't think we're going to thrive again. I met although a we do. I met. A, excuse me. I met mm -hmm. a woman years ago, and I don't know why I asked her this. She had lost her husband, who was in his 70s. She had lost her son, who was in mm. his 40s, and has had mm. a family of his own. And lost an 18-month-old child, oh, wow. and I said, "Which is what? Which was worse for you? Which one do you think she said was worse? The worse? I don't know. 18-month-old wow. baby. Ah. And I think it's That's because he saying. never became who mm. he might have become. Well, will you yeah. lose your future? Mm. The future that you future. envisioned for yourself? Exactly." And exactly. to a certain extent, we've all, in certain ways, lost the future that future. we thought we were going to have. Exactly. The going to the graduation. Mm -hmm. the, all that. I have clients now that are my son's age, and I, I uh, see them come in with a birth date of the same year, and it's like, wow. And you oh. think Logan would have been doing this it, now, right. and he would have yeah, been doing that now. Wow. And, but you know, they're so full-bodied, and, you know, yeah. just. Yeah. But talk about loss of your mother. I mean, I mm -hmm. lost my mother, uh, you know, as an adult, and, you know, it's tough. You lose. You it lose is. the history, you history. lose the story, you're history. the next one up, and well, all that I'm kind of thing. I'm also thinking for, for both of you, you never know your life without your mother. And all of a yeah. sudden, they're not in your life. That must be strange. Yeah, yeah the, you know, the, the uh, desire to call her and, yeah. and talk to her on the phone. Sure. and Yeah. The, it, it, there's a certain bigness about that, and, and mm -hmm. I'm next. Well, listen, and ladies. I'm next. I know yeah. she said that I before. I know, and I'm next. <laughs> next up, I think you said, right? Huh. Yeah. Well, listen, I want to thank you guys for being on the show so much. Thank and uh, thank I you for love the work yes. you're doing. And thank it, you. It's the an work amazing you guys thing. are doing is amazing. Yeah, this is really great. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, thank thanks. You. Thank, thank you, Marsha and yeah. Carol. This was great. Thank, thank you. you. Well, Heidi, it's been great to have them on the show and to talk about uh, art and humor. And we're going to have music with Larry Stevens mm -hmm. and uh, all these creative ways to heal. And we everybody does it in a different way. Absolutely. And the idea that every loss for people is, is different. Mm -hmm. and. And we know the one that you're grieving is your biggest loss right now. Right, absolutely. No matter what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're hoping that everybody will come and visit us on our website at opentohope.com. And we've got great TV shows on there and radio shows and lots of guests and lots going on. Right, Heidi? Absolutely, yep. Yeah. And I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing Larry sing. Yeah, I am too. So let's uh, hear Larry sing. And please visit us on Facebook and on Twitter. And sign up for our newsletter at opentohope.com. And thanks for watching the show today. God bless. Happy birthday to you, baby. I
Oh.